Welcome. There's a very famous formula in mathematics called the geometric series formula. It states that 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus da 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 forever, if I could add up all the powers of x forever so it'd be very godlike, go beyond time, in the end you'll end with the value 1 over 1 minus x. Well, clearly there's something suspect about this formula. It can't always be true. For example, if I put in x equals 2, it's telling me that 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 forever is 1 over 1 minus 2. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. That's clearly not right. But there are some values of x for which this is actually a valid formula. So let me give you one example of where this formula must be true, and then we'll explore, OK, how do we know this formula is true in general, and for what range of values of x can, this, can we say it's valid? OK, here's a very simple physical demonstration to play with some friends. So imagine I had a piece of paper, and I was working with four friends. I'd like to share this paper amongst my four friends equally, so I'll divide into fifths. That is, I'll keep some paper for myself. I'll give my first friend one-fifth of the paper, my second friend one-fifth, my third friend one-fifth, my fourth friend one-fifth. Whoops, a little bit messy. And I'll keep this final fifth for myself. Actually, I'm a generous guy. I'm going to take that fifth and divide into fives again. So that is, I'm actually dividing the paper into 20 fifths now. And I'll give each of my friends one of these 20 fifths. So I'll add to my first friend's pile 1 over 5 squared, 1 over 5 squared for my second friend, add 1 over 5 squared for my third friend, 1 over 5 squared for my third fourth friend, and I'll keep this final 1 25th myself. Actually, you know what? I'm going to be generous again. I'll divide that 25th into 1 25th, so divide it into 5 again, and share that amongst my friends. So it's adding 1 over 5 cubed, 1 over 5 cubed, 1 over 5 cubed for each of my friends, and I'll keep the final 1 25th myself. Well, I'm going to keep doing this. Clearly, if I could do this forever, if I was godlike and go beyond time, the amount of paper I'm keeping is dwindling to zero. So if I went beyond time, I'm actually ending up with zero paper in the end. So where did all my paper go? Well, it must have gone equally amongst my four friends. I kept this as an equal distribution process, so it must have gone equally amongst my four friends. So actually, by the end of time, I can include all the vanished paper, must have gone equally amongst my four friends. Each of my friends got one-fourth the paper then. But what did I give them? Well, I started by giving them one-fifth of the paper, and then one-twenty-fifth of the paper, then one-twenty-fifth of the paper, and so on. Five to the fourth. So I conclude this pile of paper that each of my friends got must, in the end, after an infinite amount of time, if I could go beyond time, and it's being one quarter of the paper. Well, this doesn't quite look like the geometric series formula. It begins with a 1, so let me add 1 to both sides. 1 plus this and plus 1. So I'm claiming 1 plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth squared and so on adds up to 5 fourths. That is, x is 1 fifth. And if you check 1 over 1 minus x, 1 over 1 minus 1 fifth, multiply the top and bottom by 5, gives me 5 over 5 minus 1, is indeed 5 fourths. So this geometric series formula, though not valid for x equals 2, is actually valid for x equals 1 fifth. So it's working in some cases. If I had 20 friends, that means I'm going to divide the paper into 20 ones, that is 20 pieces for my friends and one piece for myself, and keep doing this forever, I'm going to argue that 1 21th plus 1 21th squared plus 1 21th cubed and so on must add up to um, 1 20th. And in general, if I had... Uh, a whole bunch of friends, n minus 1 friends, so there's n people in all. If I divide the people amongst n, n people in all, including myself, in the end, I must have this formula, which is a version of the geometric series formula. If you add the ones and do the algebra, it all works out to be this formula. So in what sense is this formula valid? There are some x values of x which is fine. There's some values of x for which is not fine. Well, to deal with this, um, a lot of people will do a, an algebraic argument, which goes as follows. And I need a little bit more space here. They say, OK, I don't know what this, this left-hand side is. Let's just give it a name. Let's call it, I don't know, B for Benjamin. Then if I rewrite the left-hand side by doing something sneaky, by factoring out x from everything else after the 1, that's still Benjamin. But I notice what appears is Benjamin again. So 1 plus x times Benjamin is Benjamin. So 1 equals uh, Benjamin minus x Benjamin. That is, Benjamin must be uh, 1 over 1 minus x. Voila. But this algebra is a little bit worrisome because we know it's not valid for x equals 2. So what are we doing here? All this is really saying is, if you believe there's an answer, and the mathematics here is not claiming there is one to begin with, then the answer must be 1 over 1 minus x. So it doesn't answer the question, when should you believe this has a formula, this formula has an answer? Well, the way around that is to actually don't do the beyond human thing. Let's keep this a finite process. Let's just do the sum again. This is a little bit tedious, I'm sorry. 1 plus x squared, and just go up to, say, the nth power, and ask, when does that have an answer? Well, it does. It's a finite sum that has an answer. What must it be? Let's call it Benjamin. Same trick. 
pull out a factor of x from these whoops these pieces x squared plus x to the n minus 1 equals b this here is not quite Benjamin we're missing x to the n but it is Benjamin minus x to the n All right, so there's a formula um, I'm going to spare the algebra because I'm worried about running out of time on this video. But if you do the algebra in this, this tells me that Benjamin is actually 1 minus x to the n plus 1 over 1 minus x. So the least the finite version is is a valid formula. Equals plus x to the n equals 1 minus x to the n plus 1 over 1 minus x. The question is, when can I push this to the limit by letting n get bigger and bigger and bigger and move to be so big? so big that it's in some sense infinite that we've moved beyond time. Well for this formula to be valid if, as n gets larger and larger I really need to know that this guy 1x to the n plus 1 is a meaningful value as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well if x is 2 x to the 2 to the powers of n is just getting huge that's not meaningful. That answers the question why this formula is not working for x equals 2. This, this, this region is not meaningful for x equals 2. It is valuable for x, meaningful for x equals a fifth because the powers of a fifth multiply fifth by itself lots of time goes to 0 in which case this formula is heading off to 0. This, this part of the formula is heading off to 0. Whoops, where's my pen? Sorry. Oh, where's my pen? Still having trouble. That's going to 0. So this formula wants to become 1 minus 0 over 1 minus x. Bingo. 1 over 1 minus x. In fact, the whole question is the geometric. The whole issue becomes the geometric series formula is valid whenever x to the a power uh, x to the power has meaning as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it certainly has meaning if x is a value smaller than one, because powers of numbers smaller than one go to zero. In which case, you can say this formula, the geometric series formula, is valid whenever x is between negative one and one. Well, what about being 1 itself? What about being negative 1 itself? That's kind of interesting. You should think about that, those ones. All right, thank you very much.